Bloomhouse and Amazon Studios continues to offer up some Halloween-inspired frights with their latest release, Nocturne. This is the second one of the films under their Welcome to the Bloomhouse banner that I'll be reviewing, following my review of Black Box last week. Now, much like that movie, this one also seems to be content with living in the shadows of his much better forebears, while still managing to tell a somewhat intriguing story that isn't without some glaring problems. Hi guys, Michael Obaimi here. And today, I'm reviewing the new Bloomhouse horror film, Nocturne. The film centers upon the twin sisters, Juliet and Vivian. Both girls are students in a prestigious art school, having been groomed to play the piano since early childhood. Vivian appears to be the most successful of the two, exuding a level of skill and confidence that her sister seems incapable of. But after the most talented students in school commit suicide, the school decides to open up its much coveted position of concerto soloists. This sparks a rivalry between the two sisters, with Juliet seeing it as the perfect opportunity to finally prove that she is capable of surpassing her sister. Except things take a turn for the otherworldly after Juliet discovers the notebook once owned by their dead classmates, with detailed instructions on how to play one of the most complicated arrangements, along with what looks like a pagan ritual. Now she must decide just how far she is willing to go to get what she wants. I definitely got Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince vibes while watching Nocturne. But even more than that, the movie owes a lot to the likes of the brilliant Black Swan. And there is nothing wrong with a movie that borrows heavily from works that came before, provided it is ready to do enough to distinguish itself from those prior works, which is kind of where Nocturne starts to falter in my opinion. My biggest problem with Nocturne is that it just wasn't all that scary to begin with. I didn't feel the same overriding sense of dread I felt in Black Swan, nor did it have the sense of wonder and mystery I got from Half-Blood Prince. At several points during the movie, I had to actively remind myself that this had been billed as a supernatural horror film. But what we got instead was closer to psychological horror. This is not to say that nothing supernatural happens during the movie. It was just that whenever it did, it was too underwhelming to have any kind of impact or leave any lasting impression. This wasn't exactly helped by its wholly unconvincing special effects. There were a few VFX shots sprinkled throughout the movie that threatened to pull me out of any sense of immersion I had felt leading up to those scenes. I guess I have to consider that these movies are being made under the television division of Bloomhouse, and as such, shouldn't be held up to the same standards as their theoretical releases. That knowledge didn't make seeing them any less jarring though. Overall, the movie was just okay and a bit of a disappointment, considering it never fully committed to its supernatural horror premise. For anyone looking for a solid psychological horror film with an art house vibe, I'd suggest that they watch the far superior Black Swan instead. But if you are intent on giving this one a shot, then at least go in with your expectations tempered. I'll give the film a 5 out of 10. Would you like to see me review the remaining movies in the Welcome to the Bloomhouse series? Let me know in the comment section down below. Also be sure you are subscribed to the channel and that you have notification bells turned on so that you'll be able to see those reviews as soon as they go up. And until the next one, this is Michael signing off.